Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Do you ever wonder where your favorite foods come from? Like, what's the history behind bacon-wrapped hot dogs? Hi, I'm Eva Longoria. Hi, I'm Maite Gomez Rejon. Our podcast, Hungry for History, is back. And this season, we're taking an even bigger bite out of the most delicious food and its history. Seeing that mm. the most popular cocktail is the margarita, followed by the mojito from Cuba, oh. and the piña colada from Puerto Rico. Listen to Hungry for History on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. The TMS Podcast. On BBC Sounds. We're going to reflect on uh, Joe Root's achievement. As I mentioned, we were talking to, to Alistair, we were talking to uh, Joe's dad, Matt, as well. But let's first of all, let's sit back and reflect a bit. It's been quite a journey uh, for Root from surprise selection in Nagpur to a record breaker in Multan. One man following events with considerable interest, I suspect, is called Joe Root, who is a young Yorkshire, Yorkshire opener who's been selected for England's test tour to India this winter. Uh, Joe Root, good afternoon to you. Afternoon, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Congratulations. Great thank, stuff. Thanks, thank you very much. Right. When did when did it all start? When did you first crick up, pick up a cricket bat? Uh, well, I think I got shoved one in my hand when I was about uh, two weeks old. Were you? Was it your, <laughs> was it your dad who looked at you thought, he's a boy, he's going to be a exactly. cricketer? <laughs> I think he, he uh, premeditated it as soon as he found out I was, was going to be a boy. So. Is he a cricketer himself? Yeah, yeah, he plays club cricket at Sheffield Collegiate um, yeah. for a number of years. And right. Yeah, that's pretty much where I, um, I learnt my trade down there, watching him play on the sidelines with my brother. As he bowls to Root, who picks him up over deep mid-wicket, and that is going to be just six. It just carried over the ropes, and that was a fine shot, a really meaty blow. I said, did he have the power? He did there. He's cleared the ropes, which is quite a long boundary out to deep mid-wicket. England 139 for five. England have finished it on 199 for five, but it is a day that Joe Root will remember for the rest of his life. Joe, it's it's all been a, a bit of a whirlwind. How's the, the England experience been so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. Um, obviously a great learning opportunity, and got a taster with the the first three test matches and now to finally get an opportunity has been you know phenomenal and who was it who gave you the fantastic news then the day before um alistair cook gave me the news which is obviously nice to to receive and you know just really proud and i'm sure you've always had dreams of playing in that first test match they, they might not have involved coming to the wicket at 119 for four england under pressure but was your plan at, at that point just just to try and get in bat time yeah, I mean, it was just to try and be positive with my footwork and um, speak to Kevin um, and sort of just, just get in, really. Kevin Peterson told us you were smiling when you came to the wicket. Did, did Test cricket feel any different? Uh, not really. I mean, it was great to to get out there and be back with Kev because he made it very light-heart, like very welcoming, very light-hearted. And just finally, uh, Joe, I mean, lots of people have made this point. There was, a, there was a young man called Alistair Cook who made his debut in, in Nagpur as a, a 21-year-old and has gone on to fantastic things. Well, what's he had to say to you about before the match and, and obviously in the match and what you've done? Uh, just really encouraging, really. And, you know, more than anything, just, just trying to help me out and get me in a good frame of mind to, to go and, you know, perform the best I can and, um, and just try and do what I can to uh, help the team out. 259 for four. Root on 96. Bracewell goes into bowl to him now. And that's nerdled away down towards third man. And there it is. Root's first Test 100 on a Saturday at Leeds in front of his home crowd. A huge roar goes up and he gets a hug from Bairstow. A milestone in any cricketer's life. And possibly the first of many for Joe Root, a maiden Test Match 100. Root on 97, a short leg, a slip, and in goes Hera from this end, the nursery end, he bowls on the leg stump, oh. tucked away into the leg oh. side, there's three here I reckon, let's see, it might only be two, the field is giving chase, the crowd really want Root to turn and come back for the third, here he comes, the throw on the bounce, and look at Joe Root oh. celebrate this return to the England team. Drops for the final 
final test of the Ashes. He's back for the first test of the summer and celebrates with a hundred not out. And Matt Pryor, another in rehabilitation, as it were, who's coming back into the fold, gives him a great hug and says, well done. <laughs> and all around Lords, those that remain, there's still a fair number. Thousands, 20,000 maybe, are on their feet. Henry. Bowls to Root, and Root dropped it into the offside. A bit of hesitation, they run through, shout the stumps at the striker's end. is unsuccessful, it goes down towards fine leg. And Joe Root, with a very iffy single, has made his double hundred. Joe Root on 99. Here comes Daryl Mitchell bustling in. Root steps forward, looks to oh. chop, could have chopped him up to his stump. In the career of Joe Root, 100 number 27. Now he kisses the badge, now he raises both arms, and that familiar smile is back again. Consecutive hundreds, back to back innings for Joe Root for the third time in his career. Joe Root, open stance, taps his bat down, he gives himself room, he carves it out to the cover, and Joe Root goes to 34 test hundreds. He jumps in the air, he raises his back to the crowd. Everyone up on their feet. To witness a man do something that no other England player has done before. We salute you, Joe Root. He is quite simply England's greatest. And it's absolutely right he should have the record on his own. Take it in, Joe. We are watching a genius. Two days ago, 33, here you are, 34th, well done. Cheers, thank you. Explain to a batting dunce what batting nirvana actually is. I mean, are you literally just standing there and just playing well, and not really having... There. It's as if you're, like, hovering outside of your body and it's just doing it on autopilot. And I think it only really happens four or five times in your career. Um, but that's what you're always searching for. And you, uh, When you go out and you practice and you do all the work and drills that's what you're trying to get yourself in that place where you can just be on autopilot and you know if it doesn't work out you've just got to I guess that's a way of trying to keep improving and getting better and um, you know, that's sort of a driver for me is you know, every day can I find you know, can I get closer to that state where you feel um, like it's just happening automatically. Root on 67 he needs four runs He's waiting now, bat raised, Jamal on his way, scuttles in, bowls to him and he drives straight down the ground. It's beaten the mid on field, to win a chase here for him, the ball's creeping towards the boundary, it's just going to make it. And Joe Root has done it. He's become the highest scoring Englishman in Test match history. And he's done so undemonstrably. Does he know? There's no raising of the bat, there's no kissing of the badge, there's no jumping up and down. He's already hit more centuries than anybody else. And now in his 147th Test match, he's beaten Sir Alistair Cook's record of 12,472 runs. And I must say, it's highly likely that whatever Root's final tally will be, it'll never be beaten. There we go. And <laughs> you can hear... Actually, I was looking to my left at Andy Zoltzman, <laughs> thinking, have we miscalculated here? I mean, has, has it actually been... The... Because when you listen back to all those celebrations, he's jumping about, he's celebrating, he's, he's waving his, his cap around. Literally nothing. Alistair Cook, good morning. Morning, Agus. Morning, Zoltz. Well, it's lovely to have you joining us. Uh, uh, let's start with that point. I, mean, I don't know if you were watching or listening or quite what, but uh, there was absolute silence. There was absolutely no celebration whatsoever. It was, it was all rather, rather strange. Are you, are you surprised by that? Well, I, I actually was watching it. Sorry, Agus, I wasn't listening to you at that time. <laughs> um, That's OK. And, yeah, I, 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 he, and when you said, did he know, well, he, quite clearly he would have known that... Um, you just do, don't you? Um, but, well, you know, what a shot to do it with. And, and, and what a kind yes. of, like, I suppose, probably for Rooty now that he's probably got bigger fish to fry. Does that, that, that's, that seems to be the message, doesn't it? it, it that, that could well yeah. be it, that he's got, he's, got, he's got higher targets in mind. 
Absolutely, and I, I think that the, you know, it, it is that it is that kind of. I don't know whether you know what he is, um, you know what his exact, uh, you know his exact aim is in, in cricket, but he had just not lost that hunger, is it? That hunger and that desire to, to keep on scoring runs. Where, you know, I'd have thought I wondered whether the captaincy and. You know, going back into the ranks, which is not an easy thing to do. I, I, know, I struggle with it, but you know, there's certainly, certainly something missing from my game, and actually, almost it's taken him almost to another level of um, of consistency. And we'll probably look back in, at that shot. I keep thinking about something. That shot, that shot against Bumrah in India, yes. and that reverse with that so that infamous shot, which playing at since that moment. As he had, I think Zoltz will probably correct me. He was averaging 75 or something, which is extraordinary numbers extraordinary numbers for a player you know like at that kind of level he is at you know with 12,000 test runs to go again almost as if that was kind of a bit of a reality check for him and you know I, I just I, I've never seen that hunger and determination and kind of that relentlessness in his in anyone's batting really um, uh, uh, but he does it in such an elegant way yeah, he I mean, just looked so focused today. You know, we talk about that Boomer shot. I think I mentioned it in there as well. That we're unlikely to see it today because you just see he 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 just had a he he was on a mission today. Um, but the exit with that lack of celebration, it seems as if actually with, with, with Root has always been the case. It's it's the team, it's the team that comes first, and this is just a milestone along the way. Yeah, and also you know, great players recognise moments in when it's in their favour, and and you've got to make the difference, and and you've got to cash in, and you know, just over the last last couple of days, you know, this pitch is a great pitch for batting. You know, there's a bit of talk about those cracks opening up, but they don't seem to do nothing. You know, yeah. this is this is when you dip your bread, isn't it? You know, this is when, you know, kind of this is when as as a world class operator, the Joe Root is one of the best. He's gonna he's gonna dip his he's gonna dip his bread and gonna make. You know, batting is never easy, but you have easier moments. Um, and you know, the ball's you know forty odd overs old. You're on seventy odd. I just be you know, I always call, almost can call it a Joe Root sometimes when he bats. It's like there's never inevitability about his first. Get 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 to ten, and you think, well, he's he's on today. He's on today, and you know, I felt that pretty much, you know, in this innings, even yesterday when he got when he went out there, it's just been, you know, the only probably one or two plays and misses, which is, you know, he's just extraordinary. The only thing I'm I'm trying to think what makes him different to like every other English player now, <laughs> and I'm interesting results. How many times he gets in compared to other players? Because you know, we talk about batting like the hardest thing. Um, as a as a batsman, is those first getting to ten? You know that's when it's hard hardest. I mean, you know, you're trying to get the pace of the wicket, the pace of the ball, all that kind of stuff. Getting in is hard, and I just think he gets in more than anyone else. So that ability to, uh, and I might be wrong, but that kind of ability to get to twenty thirty, he seems to find that that level of consistency, that level of like, you know, his technique doesn't change too much. He might be fiddling a little bit around. I know he's a bit of a he is a fiddler, but he might fiddle around a little bit, but to be so consistent all the time with his rhythm and technique that is a skill amongst itself and I think sometimes you kind of forget about that and how much you have to work to get that that's not that's not god given that's like that's like hours and hours of honing that so you make it consistent yeah i i, I was i was saying earlier with with steve Finney sitting beside me that that but most players most batsmen when you look at the way they play and if you're a bowler you assess them uh, you, you might say, well, he's, yeah, he's a really good player of fast bowling, but uh, we might talk about spin, or we might talk about you know, if the ball nips back, or if, if there's this and that. There's, there's, there's often a but. That, that's not really the case with, with Root. You know, he just seems to have everything covered. You know, great player of fast bowling, great player of spin bowling, his front foot, his back foot. He, he, he doesn't get wound up with contests with bowlers. He doesn't get sucked into duels. It, just, just everything. He, he, he just seems to have batting covered. Absolutely, and I, and I think you know even you know everyone has a slight flaw in their technique. You know, even I always I always think Dravid was one of the great examples of that. Like uh, I don't know, I think he scored over thirty and a half thousand runs. One of the, the all time greats. But you think God, you could nick him off on that fifth stump. Do you know what I mean? That fourth fifth stump. But how how his technique kind of got him himself a little bit out of trouble with uh, negating that was uh, I, I found that amazing. But you always think there was something to target. Rooty's one is. It's even smaller than that. You know, the, the only area you could possibly say, like probably two slight areas of Joe Root, isn't it? Like, well, now we're nitpicking. We're not, this is not like criticism or anything like that. It's probably when the ball bounces a little bit outside of stump, he can nick 
you know, that kind of back foot guide he does so yes. well when the pitch he is slow there. Phase. He went through a phase of perhaps guiding out to gully a bit, that sort of area. Yeah, and yeah. occasionally nicking it there, occasionally. And yeah. a, very occasionally, you can get a LBW with his head falling over it a little bit when he aims too square. But they're like... They're like but they're still world-class areas he operates in yes. at, on those areas. So 99.9% of the time, he will hit them for four or, you know, a single or whatever he, he chooses to do. So that's the only two areas that, you know, you could probably say to Joe Root, if you're like, trying to analyse, you know, ultra-analyse his technique, those are slight weaknesses, but they're still world-class strengths yeah. as well. Does that, does that make sense, what I'm trying to say? And that's yeah, why, That's absolutely. kind of why I think... He is, he is just this consistent machine run scoring. And, he, and, you know, there's other geniuses, aren't there, in the world who can play genius innings, but they had, you know, slightly, you know, they were, they were a lot more inconsistent. But Joe Root kind of isn't that, isn't he? He's kind of that genius with consistency, which is kind of like the, kind of like the, <laughs> the ultimate, really. Yeah. Tell me about his character, Alistair, because before he became captain, he was you know, a bit of a joker, a bit of a larrikin, had a bit of a laugh. Um, captain, I think, made him more focused, a bit more serious, because I guess you have to be as captain. But then we, we, we're starting. Well, we began uh, a year or so ago to see that that, that side again of, of, of Root, a big smile on his face, and so on. It, it, is that is that a fair comment? I mean, does he sort of strap on a a, a cricket face when it comes to batting? I mean, underneath there is this 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 this, well, this, this character who, who likes a likes a bit of fun. Yeah, he definitely, definitely likes a bit of fun. I think, obviously, he's matured probably as, we, as he's grown up a little bit in terms of you know, that, that kind of when we first saw him in, in, in that change. But again, it was that great kind of you know, breath of fresh air of someone who almost couldn't believe his luck. I know I listened to that a little bit of like when he got called up for you know, the, the, the India tour. And obviously that interview is yeah. quite, you know, he's very <laughs> sensible and very doing the very media ECB interview. But actually, that's not yeah. Joe Root at all. And I don't remember him being like that at all on that tour. You know, except for kind of on the media. Every time else is, he was bubbling around, he's always up to something in the change yes. room, but with absolute focus on his batting. So, like, all that kind of other stuff. And But when he got to his cricket, he still had a smile doing it, but there's that kind of, like, you know, the, the, I suppose it's probably a baby-faced assassin, kind of that horrible cliche, but yes. kind of, you know, smiling my around. But deep down, there was, you know, there was that real desire and determination. And now, over, you know, 12, 13 years later... We, we, we are, we've seen that. And with his preparation, Alistair, I mean, was he a batsman who was always looking at his technique? Was he always tinkering around with things? Was he always working on things in the nets? Or was he someone who would simply you know, go out and play and be happy with the rhythm that he was in at the time and, and, and just go out and bat? No, he was always working. He's always working on something, always looking, you know, to, to kind of like, you're always like trying to manage your game, aren't you? You're always trying to manage your you know, batsmanship. So there might be something he's not quite happy with in this previous week. So be trying to manage that, trying to work out, you know, uh, how can I how can I get slightly better that, or can, how can I get it back up to the level it should be. So he's always always tinkering um, in in a very very structured teamwork, in a very structured method that makes sense. Like his his bubble, as you used to call it, like his protected bubble of his batting was so big anyway. But he's always had something he was focusing on trying to get better at, and that's. That's why he can keep on doing the stuff he's doing. Um, but he, yeah, I mean, it's just a pleasure to watch him bat now, isn't it? If you've been like, you just watch, take everything else. He, he's so easy on the eye that it, it's just easy watching. Now, Steve Smith, great player, hasn't got that ease on the eye. That yes. Rooty does have that. And, and, and I, was, I was also talking to Nathan Lehman, who was, you know, he was around early on, and he said, when he was saying, when you throw at him, it's like throwing at a wall in terms of <laughs> the amount of times it kind of just kept coming. You know, you throw, so you want his straight drives. He'd hit. He would just hit them all the time, consistently hit them out of the middle of the bat. And he said he had never seen anyone do that. You know, like there's always there's always people mistiming one. Even today, you know how shocked he was when he had. A, I think it was on about sixty odd. There's a slight in swing, you know, slight might reverse a little bit, and he tried to just drive, and the inside cloughed it to mid wicket. Like if I was yes. playing that shot, that's I'll oh, find. I haven't quite haven't quite got it right. It wouldn't bother me. He got angry at himself. It's like how have I done that? Do you know what I mean? He was so angry, like. Yeah, and then, and then he p- kind of thinks, right, what have I done? And then he puts it straight away, back it straight onto the next ball. And I think two balls later, he clipped the next one through mid wicket, like he should have done. But kind of that shows the level he's operating. He can't. He's not happy with an inside half of the bat. Well, actually, I was perfectly happy with an inside half of the bat. <laughs> well, I think you're doing yourself down a bit, there, Alistair. Um, I mean, I, I, the, the feeling is clearly that no Englishman. Uh, 
is likely to get close to this simply because of the test cricket um, restrictions these days and the amount and the amount that's likely to be played into the future and and so on. But um, what, what what about getting to the top of the tree? I mean, all those players who are above him, the four that are above him, are all long retired. Can, can you see Joe Root there overhauling Sachin Tendulkar at the top? Well, I, I can do. I I, I think. What's the, you know when I when I retired and I, I thought you know will 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 Bru, uh, Rooty break like will he get will he break well, like the record of you know twelve thousand whatever and I thought do you know what it's every chance he will you know there's you know the only thing I thought would be the captaincy and the effect of captaincy and then the hunger that kind of takes out of you so I think he's like overcome that hurdle in terms of like you know hasn't seen to that effect I think the fact that Ben Stokes has taken over the captaincy you know being such good mates has really helped. You know, that kind of relationship for, you know, you'd say Sachin's probably still favourite just. I, I'm, I'm giving him 51-49 because when you've got runs <laughs> on the ball, still 3,000, there. it's still quite, runs they're there. still there, yes. they're on there. And you, yeah. know, and, you know, he's been so lucky with injury. With, you know, all great you know, players who play for a long period of time have been lucky with injury. You just never know what's quite around the corner. But all, you know, I, I can't see, it'll have to be something like that or something which happens, you know, which I can't see happening in terms of for him to just kind of stop that because I don't think he's going to lose that hunger. I don't think he's going to lose that kind of, you know, like ability to keep driving himself forward for the next two or three years. And the only, the only little hurdle you could say in, in the way of that is crit, like crit, so always something happens around Ashes series. It has done in years, yes. in years past and years, and it will be in years present. So Ashes away in 14 months' time is always. There's always a story about every Ashes series and what the damage or not damage happens after it. So that's, but I, I, I say, I think Sachin's 51% route is 49, but I, if I was a betting man, I'd put it on route to And that's the one thing he hasn't done, 100 in Australia, so that, uh, that will drive on. Have you, have you sent him a little message yet? Have you sent him a text? They, 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 they come in here to, to Milton, you know? No, I haven't. Um, not yet. Uh, not yet, because they're not allowed their phones, are they? So I've got, I've got no. a few hours to think about something to write. What are you going to say? You're not, you're not, not to I'd... say well played, Rooty. Full stop. Are you? Well, I might do, because then that might just be like it might be just a simple thing, and then you get a bit of a joke, and then you kind of like laugh and talk about something else. But I don't know. I don't know. I do have to think about. Gucci got me a fantastic bottle of wine for breaking the record, so I'm going to have oh. to think of to do something. Um, I'd quite like to probably crack open that bottle of wine with Gucci and Rooty and have it as a, and go for dinner or something. Do something like that. I don't know, but um, yeah, I will send something, I guess. Don't worry. I know you will. That sounds great. <laughs> Alison, look, thanks for talking to us. I know you've been on the school run. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and thanks. No, re- re- really appreciate you talking to us. And, and, and yes, you were thoroughly magnanimous. I know you sent me that message, uh, <laughs> as we knew you would be. So thank you. Take care of yourself. We'll see you soon. Cheers, I guess. Cheers, guys. Travel safe. Cheers, Alistair. Right, there we go. That was nice, wasn't it? And he was literally on the school run, <laughs> parked up somewhere and, uh, and chatting to us, which is, which is great. And it, it, yeah, I think, as, as we saw during the summer with the centuries and so on, I mean, records are there to be broken and, uh, you know, Cookie reigned supreme for a while and now, you know, it's, it's Joe Root's turn. Yeah, it's a, he's so he is magnanimous, isn't he? And very humble about what he achieved mm. as a player. Um, but today is Joe Root's day and it, it quite... Remarkable that he's got there with such serenity and I think like we've all referenced, he looks like a man who's not done yet. He looks so focused on what's going to happen in this game and then into the yes. future. You wouldn't bet against him going past Sachin. That reaction still is still just, I, mean, I haven't had a chance to go away and think about it mm. yet. Um, would it have looked ridiculous in a, in a sparsely populated ground of Pakistanis if he'd gone rushing through, waving his bat and... And whooping. Well, I think um, he, he wants to show respect as well. Joe Root is such a respectful person. Um, he's a fantastic family, fantastic upbringing. Um, he's got so much respect for what Sir Alistair Cook achieved. I don't think he'd have wanted to belittle that by doing a big celebration or anything. So it will mean so much on the inside to him. Yes. But I think it's a mixture of those two things, wanting to show a lot of respect to Sir Alistair um, and the, the job to do still to save this game. Yeah. And, and it is... We, we, is, is, we always talk about it's a team game played by 11 individuals and I guess if with a big task ahead of them in this game and there's still a lot of batting to go for for England to A, be safe and then to, to push on from there 
I don't know, perhaps if you're sitting in the team, you do see an individual celebrating his own performance when actually there's a big team on. I, I, I don't know, I'm just trying to think, because it was, it was so subdued. In fact, mm. it, it was non-existent. <laughs> just a raise of the hand, yes, wasn't it? Yes, uh, but uh, even that was late. Yep. It, 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 was, it, was, it wasn't immediate. It was, it was interesting. I know someone who will shed some light on that. Uh, it's his dad. Hello, Matt. Hello, Agus. How are you? Well, I'm very well. I'm, I'm again really delighted that you've uh, you've found some time to, to speak to us. Thank you. Um, no were, were you watching? What did what did you what did, what did you think? Were you expecting that sort of response? Yeah, yeah I was really. I, I think you probably knew he'd gone, he'd gone past. You know what he's like. Yes. No, we were, we were watching it on on the on on the on the on the uh, iPad. Uh, so yeah, a big big day. Um, Oh, what a night it's going to be tonight. It's going to be a celebration, I think. Uh, it's, when we listen to the other celebrations, though, he's jumping about and waving his bat and, and, and so on. Um, I don't know, there was, there, there was nothing at all, was there? Well, it's it's um, quite modest, isn't he? So he just wanted to play it down a bit low-key, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so how, how, how do you feel about it? I mean, there was an, obviously an air of inevitability uh, about it, but were you sitting watching anxiously or just quite well, calmly? Not anxiously, really. No, I just, just um, as we say in Yorkshire, chuffed to bits. There was a degree, as you say, a degree of inevit- inevitability about it. And um, uh, obviously, we've got three tests in Pakistan and, and three tests in New Zealand before the end of the year. So um, there was a good chance he was going to get 70 runs in, in six matches. It's great to have Matt, uh, Matt, Matt joining us for, for his thoughts. So, no, he, again, he's kind of gave the view, didn't he? He's just a modest and just Yeah, kind of very yeah. humble and, yeah. and, and respectful of, of the game. And I think that's one thing about Joe Root is he's so respectful of the game. And I think that's part of the reason why he's scored so many runs across the course of his career. He's never felt as though he's cracked it. I don't think if you ever speak to him, he'll never feel as though he's completed the game. He shows it respect. He looks to improve all the time. Um, remains humble with it and you mix those things in with an insatiable appetite to score runs and just be out there in the middle um, not wanting the limelight but mm. wanting as you say you reference that it's a team game played by individuals you need that selfishness to want to be out there to be yes. the person who, who drags your team through so many tricky situations as he has done and, and he does have these targets doesn't he I mean you, you, for, for someone in his situation now very senior player very experienced batting but he has he has got these little focus points now to get to the top of the tree which must be good it, it must help definitely yes. having those things and, and those bits to tick off as you go through your career um, and you recognize those those bits they give you something to drive towards and, and you do need things when you're in the latter stages of your career things to focus on outside of your own game um, that gives you that drive to then go to the next stage and those milestones give him that Let's see if we can connect um, more cleanly with, with, with Yorkshire, shall we? Matt, are you still there? I, I am, but I'm in, I'm in uh, South Wales, I'm afraid, today. Uh, oh, my, so... my, my, my young son, Billy, is getting married this afternoon, so... Well, you uh, see, what, let's, let's just talk about that. What sort of ridiculous day this is in the Root family, eh? Yeah, I think the bubbles will be coming out later for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's fantastic, and to have two sons playing professional cricket as they are and it, uh, it must have been difficult for you with Billy down there in Glamorgan and, 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 and Joe doing what he, he does and so on it, 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 as a parent has it been quite difficult being split between the two it was quite tough when they were young because obviously you know both playing age group county cricket we were having to be in, in different counties and on the same day um, but it is difficult isn't it and, and as we talked earlier you know, parents I'm sure will relate to that but when you've got some, one who's such high profile um and you've got the other who's got a perfectly decent professional career, but uh, how, how you do divvy up that, that time, I'm sure parents will, will kind of recognise that. Yes, yeah, it would be unbelievably challenging. And, and just, yeah, to, to help Joe stay humble, your family is such a grounding place for you as a player. It is the place, your safe place that you go back to where you can feel no judgment and you're loved regardless of what happens on the pitch, whether good or or bad and it's good environments like that around you that really do help you as a player I think navigate the really tricky moments and the good moments if you can remain level throughout your whole career as it seems as though Joe Root has been able to do uh, we'll get Andy Zoltzman in here to give it just one or two uh, stats along the way of, uh, of, of Joe Root's journey uh, to uh, this magnificent uh, magnificent achievement um, but that driver again Alistair was talking about Australia uh, Australia's not been a happy hunting ground for Joe. No, as a batsman, as a captain, he's, it, it's it's 
it's, it's not going well for him. He was dropped there, of course, wasn't he? I think the only time, well, it is, the only time he's ever been dropped in his, in his career, I think, is he missed two matches. Uh, that one, and yep. one I think when his when his wife was giving birth, to yes. their, uh, their first child. So uh, it, it, you know it, that's that's quite a remarkable uh, r- run as well. It is. Uh, he averages thirty five, doesn't he? But hasn't scored a hundred down there. Hasn't clearly won a series as England haven't won since 2010-11 so I think when you when you look back on your career as a player and I only played 36 test matches you you, you do remember the records and Joe will clearly will remember these run scoring records but it's those big series that you want to win away from home and I think if um, Joe Root were to be the leading men's test run scorer and then win an away Ashes and mm. have a big part to play in that. That will feel like the, the final piece in his cricket puzzle, I think. He's got a World Cup, he's got away win in India, away win in South Africa, multiple Ashes at home. Um, that, that Ashes win away whilst making a contribution, I think, would, would put the final tiny piece in the top corner of the puzzle of a glittering career. Yeah. I wonder why Australia hasn't quite worked for him. And is well, here. He can tell us what his, what his average actually is. Uh, in, in, in Australia where he's battered in all sorts of different positions too isn't he but it's, it's interesting as to why he's uh, why, why he's found that um, difficult uh, yeah overall 14 tests in Australia across three series 892 runs average 35.6 uh, nine fifties uh, eight of them in the last two Ashes series across uh, across ten tests so it's not like he's failed in Australia um, he had a difficult first series in 2013-14 when he was a, a young player in a, in a collapsing team uh, but since then, he's been con- scored consistently, but without making those major innings that sort of define and turn matches. So that's uh, you know, one of the very few little glitches in his, in his career. Well, uh, up until 2020, another you could have pointed to was his conversion rate. Um, just uh, 17 centuries out of uh, 66, 50 plus scores. Uh, since when, his conversion rate has, uh, has been phenomenal over half of his... 50 scores since the start of 2021 he's converted into 100 so he's rectified that one sort of minor blemish particularly when he compared him with Coley and Smith and Williamson who had superb conversion rates uh, in the same uh, in the same period you look at his consistency uh, since his uh, really breakthrough year in 2014 uh, now sort of across 11 years calendar years of test cricket only once has he averaged below 40 in a calendar year that was 2019 uh, when he averaged 37, so still pretty decent. So yeah. that just unbelievable consistency in uh, you know, scoring in all areas of the world. In in Asia, averaging uh, 45, specifically in India, um, averaging uh, 45 um, over 15 15 tests. Uh, so yeah, there aren't many gaps in his career, but I think you know, as you were saying, that um, failure to have a major impact in a series in Australia, I guess, would be something that he would really be desperate to to achieve. And also from a bowler's perspective, um, Finney, it, it, he's, he's done this through being the most targeted member of the, of the team. Yeah. I mean, every effort, every energy, bring the main bowler back, all, yeah. all of that sort of stuff, uh, because you know, as soon as Joe Root comes in and he's, he's managed to flourish. Yeah, and, and the captaincy as well. I think yeah. the remarkable thing amongst that is he didn't play in a particularly successful team when he was captain. As Zoltz referenced, his win-loss ratio was very good, but they didn't win big series when he was captain and um, ended up falling on his sword. To retain the run scoring that he did throughout that time, usually when a captain's struggling and he's towards the end of a tenure, that he gets knocked over all the time, his mind's on other things. He's able to insulate himself and create that bubble that Alistair talked about around his batting that protects protects it from every other part of his game and and the ups and downs outside of that that bubble around his batting is so protected and something that um, retained itself throughout his captaincy I I think one thing about him in Australia and Alistair referenced that as well the the one tiny area of weakness that that I can think when I'm thinking about Joe Root is that back foot straight bat punch that he plays or guide towards backward point and deep third um, with the angle of Hazelwood and Cummins from over the wicket, angling it in and getting that ball to move away from back of a length in Australia, you just imagine it catching the edge. And yeah. I, I can visualise him getting out like that a few times when he's been well set in Australia. So I, I'd imagine that's something that he's already 14 months before he arrives at that series that he's thinking about. Alistair also talks, uh, Andy, about the, 
him, him getting in, and he was talking about the number of, 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 of times he'd scored fewer than 10, uh, for instance. And he, uh, I don't know, he, these stats could prove people right or wrong, but, but he, he reckoned that it, he's got a very high ratio um, of, of getting double figures and, and moving on from there as opposed to single, single figure failures. For a lot of his career, his, we talked about his 50 to 100 conversion rate wasn't great in Test cricket, uh, but he was scoring a phenomenal number of 50s. Um, I think it was one every. I can't remember. Was one every two innings for a prolonged period of his uh, of his career. It was when, once he got to 25, he had an amazing conversion rate of quarter centuries into half centuries, which is not a stat we look at often. But in terms of the consistency of run production he had throughout his career, I think does show us a lot about uh, about Root as a player. Another thing that wasn't great earlier in his career was his second innings record, um, and that's another thing that has improved vastly in uh, in recent times. Um, averaging oh, 66 since uh, the start of the baseball era in in mm. second innings specifically early in his career, it was uh, you know most players average less in second innings than yeah. than first innings as the game gets more difficult. So he had a reasonable uh, record, but there was a big gap between his first and second innings uh, records, and that's another aspect of his batting that's significantly improved during these last uh, last four years. Right, thanks everybody. Thanks everyone for taking part in that. Uh, to Alistair Cook uh, and to Matt Root in particular. Sorry you couldn't get a better connection uh, through to Matt, but I do hope they have a brilliant celebration uh, in South Wales as, uh, as Billy Root gets married today. What a day for the Root family. Uh, Joe becomes the highest scoring Englishman in Test history uh, and, uh, and his brother gets married. So I hope they have a fantastic day. The TMS Podcast, live from Pakistan. Get full analysis of Pakistan versus England on the BBC Sport website and app. Hey, I hear you think podcasts are all about true crime, huh? Well, wise guy, the iHeartRadio app's got all kinds of podcasts. We got stuff you should know and stuff they don't want you to know. We got Bobby Bones, Big Boy, and Lou Later. We got SpongeBob Binge Pants and Exotic Erotic Storytime. We got Doughboys, Two Dudes in a Kitchen, Green Eggs and Dan. Hey, we got Elf Quest. We got podcasts for everything on the iHeartRadio app for free. If you don't download that, well, that's not just a true crime, my friend. That's criminal.